Hey guys, welcome back to the Spruce and Linen channel. I'm Janelle and today we're gonna talk all about weaving with cotton rope. So let's get started. Hey, yeah, yeah, you right there. Um, Do you wanna learn how to make this adorable woven pouch? Head over to spruceandlinen.com to check out our all new e-class. There's also a link in the description box below. All right, you guys, so I get a lot of questions about where I get my cotton rope that I weave with, um, how to weave with it, all the different things. And today I'm really excited to tell you that all of this rope is from Unfettered Co. So we had talked about Unfettered Co. a couple weeks ago. They are a fellow Canadian company. At the time of filming this, they ship to both Canada and the USA, and we have a couple of discount codes for you. Unfettered Co. was so generous and has provided us with two codes that you can use to get some discounts. And those are Spruce and Linen 10 to get 10% off your order of $100 Canadian or more, or Spruce and Linen 20 to get 20% off your order of $200 Canadian or more. Now you've probably noticed that I really like weaving with cotton rope and I love using it in my fringe as well. And one of the reasons I really love this rope in particular is because it's recycled. So I think that's really great. And it comes in so many beautiful colors and sizes and types. And I wanted to jump into what I prefer weaving with. This right here is actually a plied cotton rope and I actually don't prefer weaving with this. This is like a macrame cord. All of these could be used for macrame. They can also be used for weaving. This is a plied rope, so it's going to be a little bit more like a yarn. It's totally personal preference, but I really like the single ply a lot. And so that's basically all I use. I just wanted to show you that this is an option. You can get big spools from them. You can get smaller cakes from them. So definitely just go check them out. There'll be a link in the description box below. And don't forget to use those discount codes. Now these are affiliate codes, which means we get a small kickback from every sale, but that doesn't cost you any extra. Now that I've shown you the two main different types, I'm going to talk a little bit more about the sizing. The three sizes I use are three millimeter, five millimeter, and seven millimeter. Now with recycled cotton string or rope, I usually tend to call the single strand a cotton string versus the multiple strand or the plied version a rope. I think that's the correct terminology. I'm sure someone in the macrame world knows this for sure, but I have been calling this single ply string, even though technically it, it is kind of multiple plies, but anyway. The thing with recycled cotton string is that it is gonna vary in size a little bit because it's recycled. So sometimes if you buy three millimeter in this color and you buy it again months down the road or you buy a different color, they might seem like they're slightly different sizes and that is just because they are recycled. So they're not perfect and I kind of like that about them. We're gonna talk about a few different stitches that you can use this string for, but by all means, these aren't the only ones you can use. You can certainly play around with pretty much any stitch with this material. I just wanted to kind of show you some of the main ones that I think look really great. The first one I'm going to weave, I'm gonna do some diamond twill. Now, we're not gonna really talk about how to do the diamond twill in today's video, but if you would like to learn, head to spruceandlinen.com. There'll be a little pop-up box that will prompt you to sign up for our email list and you can get the free PDF pattern for this diamond twill. And then we also have a completely free tutorial here on YouTube. I'll put a link somewhere up here and you can learn how to weave diamond twill. For this diamond twill, I'm going to be using the seven millimeter natural cotton. And despite what some of you have said, you can actually fit seven millimeter through our tapestry needles. So what I like to do is I just take the end, I squish it, and then I just shove it through and you do have to pull a bit to get all the ends in. But it totally fits. One thing to keep in mind when you're weaving with this recycled cotton rope is depending on which direction you're moving, it's gonna want to untwist or twist more. So right now you can see it is twisting more, so I might have to just untwist it a bit to make it sit properly. This is totally normal. Just pay attention to that on your edges so that you don't get some funny twisting happening. Okay. 
Here's the diamond twill in that seven millimeter rope. I love string, you know, they're interchangeable. I love how chunky this looks and how quickly it weaves up. So this would be a really great way to make if you're making a really huge diamond twill piece, I would highly recommend trying out some seven millimeter cotton string just because it's gonna weave up so quickly and be such a statement piece and it just looks really beautiful. Next up, we're gonna use the five millimeter to do some Egyptian knotting. Something I discovered a little while ago is that the Egyptian knot is actually just the reverse of a sumac stitch. If you look at the back of your piece after you've done an Egyptian knot, you'll notice it looks like sumac stitch. So I thought that was really interesting. We're going to do our Egyptian knot a little bit differently today because I wanted to show you another way that you can use it. What we're gonna do is stagger more. Again, I'm not gonna spend too much time on how to do the Egyptian knot. We do have an Egyptian knot tutorial. I'll put it up here, but I will briefly touch on it. With the Egyptian knot, we're gonna just start by bringing our rope or string under two strings like so. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go back around those strings plus four more. So in the previous Egyptian knot tutorial, I we only went around two extra. We're going around four because I'm gonna show you how you can stagger colors to really mix them together. So we're going under, okay, let's get this out of the way. I know this looks like a bit of a mess. So we went around the first two and then when we came back around, we went underneath those first two plus Oh, I went five more, but we only want four more. Now we're gonna go around these two, so the furthest on the right two that we've already gone under, plus again, four more. And then we're gonna continue that all the way across. Now at the end, we're gonna end a little bit oddly. I'm actually gonna just take this one around one more string. And then we'll go around these last three since we had an odd amount of strings. Then we're gonna go in with our other color and I'm using this really pretty pink color. And now we're going to start under these two strings. We're going to go back under those two plus four more. And you can see now we can kind of tuck in our other color next to the previous one, which allows them to sit right next to each other and I think is really pretty and we can kind of create a bit of a polka dot look. Now we're gonna turn around and stagger our colors. So I'm going to take the blue. I'm actually gonna cut some of this excess off because I have a lot of string here. And what I'm gonna do to turn around and start staggering the colors is I'm going to take this blue. I'm going to go back under these two strings that the pink is around and then I'm gonna start moving across. So now I'm going this direction. So I'm going under those two again and around four more. And I'm going to continue that all the way across. So now with the pink, since we have the blue here, I'm actually gonna bring these back through those three strings. I'm gonna go around them plus four more and continue that all the way across. I'm gonna continue on with a couple more rows so that you can really see this effect. I really love staggering these colors and having it look a little bit more like a checkered effect. And I like that these the Egyptian knot stitch looks like 
what it's called. It looks like an, a little knot. And then by staggering those colors, you get even more pattern and texture. Last but certainly not least, we have knotting. Knotting is my absolute favorite technique to use cotton string for. And depending on what size you use, it gives different effects. I will put a link for the knotting tutorial itself up here where I show you how you can do different, more organic shapes. But today we're gonna to be working a little bit more on the straight. Now I'm gonna do a little example of each size. What's great about knotting is it's kind of an awesome way to use up shorter pieces. I still use long pieces while I'm doing it, but because they're actual knots, you can definitely use shorter pieces and knot them in wherever you like. So we'll start with the seven millimeter and how I like to start the knot, especially with this really thick rope is I'll go around two strings and I'll just literally tie a single knot around those first two strings. Then what I typically do, but you can make this as organic as you like, depending on the effect that you want. But then I like to go under two strings and then now I'm gonna make a knot around these two strings. So kind of like with sumac, I'm working in, I'm moving right, but I'm wrapping my string around the left. So I'm gonna take my rope, put it around the, underneath those two strings. This loop in my right hand, I'm going to twist. Then I'm going to bring the other end through and start tightening that up. And now we have our first knot and I'm going to do that again. So under these two strings, Then the next two strings, I'm going from right to left with the end of my string, taking the loop in my hand, twisting it, bring the end through, and tighten up the knot, and continuing that all the way across. Now to turn around, it's really easy. So I kind of skipped this second last string and just went around these two. But to turn around, I'm going to go back under, I'm gonna go under three strings. And now we're moving in the opposite direction. So I'm taking these two strings, taking the rope or string left to right. So now the loop is in my left hand. I'm going to twist it. See, I'm moving my hand up. So I'm twisting that loop, bringing in the end or through the end and tightening it up. Now, this is one way you're definitely gonna notice that you're untwisting the string when you're moving this direction. So you can see that the knots aren't going to be quite as um, tight as the other ones. You can kind of retwist everything to try to get it to be a little bit tighter but it is gonna have like a different effect, which kind of just adds to the organic nature of knotting. Now I'm letting this be kind of messy. You can definitely make it a little bit more tidy if you prefer. Gonna get one last knot in here. And then with this one, this end, I'm just gonna kind of tuck under. Actually, I'm just gonna go right over those two strings and then that would get tucked in the back. Now I'm gonna move on to five millimeter and I have this nice big piece still and it's the exact same concept. It's just gonna be a lot smaller than the seven millimeter. So once again, I'm going to just continue with these rows really like stacked on top of each other but again, you can stagger these rows however you want to make the texture look a little bit more um, uneven on purpose. So I'm just gonna do the exact same thing with the five millimeter and then I'll move on to the three millimeter. Now with a three millimeter, I am going to switch it up a little bit in that because it's so much thinner, I'm actually going to go around um, one string at a time. We're gonna start it the exact same way. So just tying a single knot around one string. Then I'm gonna go just under one string and then on to the next. Now with the three millimeter is where you'll want to have quite a few rows to start to really see the texture. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and do a few rows so you can see what it looks like. And here at the top, you can see the knotting in the three different sizes. So again, we have three millimeter, five millimeter, and seven millimeter. And as you can see, you know, going that other direction, it is a little bit looser. Sometimes I spend more time making it nice and tight, but I just kind of wanted to quickly do this just so you can get a sense of what it looks like. And those are three stitches that you can use with the cotton string rope, whatever you want to call it. Single ply is what I like to use. Like I said before, you can try all kinds of different stitches with these materials, and I encourage you to play around with them. But these three are a good place to start, and I think they all look really great. Again, if you want to try out some recycled cotton single ply rope, or string, whatever you want to call it. You can use our codes with Unfettered Co. Spruce and Linen 10 to get 10% off your purchase of $100 Canadian or more, or you can use Spruce and Linen 20 to get 20% off your order of $200 Canadian or more. Link will be in the description box below. Let me know in the comments below, have you ever woven with cotton rope or cotton string? Do you like it? Do you have any other questions or any other go-to stitches that you like to use? Let us know. And if you like this video, please hit that like button, subscribe, and click the bell to get notifications when I post new videos. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.